Hi, I'm Patrick. And I'm Liv. And this is the Maki Vlog. We're doing another road trip to Las Vegas. If you don't recall, our last road trip to Las Vegas was in a Model Y. We're back in the Maki. We're really excited. We're gonna like have a lot of fun with Blue Cruise and just, you know, relaxing on the way to Vegas. Woo, let's go. For the second year now in a row, we are on our way to CES, the Consumer Electronics Show. We're so excited. You've probably seen a whole bunch of videos from that already because these vlogs take a long time to edit and that stuff we're gonna try crank out. So we're really excited. We're gonna share more about that. Um, but what's the deal, Patrick? <laughs> um, yeah, we are gonna do some route planning. Um, it's a windy, windy day out in the desert. So uh, I was looking last night and they're saying like 25 mile per hour sustained winds with up to 40 mile per hour gust. Um, in a gas car, that might not make that much of a difference. In an EV, besides the fact that it can like make things swerve around, it can really affect the range. So I'm curious to see how our map planning apps are going to deal with that. Um, just you know, before we get into the route planning here on the car, I was doing some checking before we left the house. Uh, and I did a comparison between Apple Maps, uh, Ford Pass, and a better route planner. They all are suggesting one stop between here and Vegas. But it was interesting because Ford Pass was saying a 50-minute stop in Barstow. Uh, a better route planner was saying, wait, let me see which one is which. Uh, no, Apple Maps was saying a 40-minute stop in Barstow. And then a better route planner said a 21-minute stop in Baker. Barstow is about 155 miles from here. Uh, Barstow, what did, did I say? Baker. Baker is 200 <laughs> miles from here, 204 miles from here. Uh, Barstow is 154 miles from here. So um, we are nearly at 100%. We're at like 99 slash 100%. We just drove over from our house, so we're fairly close. But um, it's basically we got one stop. We may make two. We may take an extra bathroom break. But let's look at the actual route that we're doing and we'll get started. Okay, so we we are, it's still saying 100%, 254 miles of range. Uh, this is the GT Performance Edition, so the rated range is 260 miles. Um, it is a bit chilly out this morning. It says 56 here, but we just got out of our garage. I think uh, this morning it got down to about 40 degrees here in Oceanside, which is very rare for us to get down that low. Um, I sent the trip over so uh, I could actually say, go to my trips. Oh, did not, oh no, there it is. And then there's my Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, so this will be the same route that I was just talking about. And if I hit go, it's gonna go ahead and add in the charging stops. Okay, traffic laws, be alert and use voice commands while driving. And it should be adding the, um, the calculations for weather and traffic as well. Saying five hours and seven minutes total time. Uh, here's like all of my uh, directions that it's, it's giving me. So this is still saying like go to uh, Baker, not Baker, I keep mixing, mixing those up, Barstow. And, uh, but now it's a little bit more accurate. It's saying 25 minute charge, 43% to 75%. Now this is one of those situations where the car is pretty smart, but uh, I don't think, I'd want to uh, go across a very windy desert with not much buffer. So um, it's saying charge to 75%. We'll definitely at least go to 80. It's saying we arrive in Vegas at 13%, which is not bad, but there's also a climb to get from Baker uh, into uh, Nevada. So, um, you know, that that's one where we may want to get a little bit extra. But anyways, we're going to play it by ear. We'll probably have to stop going to the bathroom. We'll probably want a lunch break. It's 9.52 now. We didn't, we don't really eat much of a breakfast. We just had like a power bar, um, but we'll, we'll need to stop for lunch at some point. Maybe that'll be with the charging stop, maybe not. But let's go ahead and get on the road. Well, we had 30 minutes in, 
So 30 minutes, how long have we been driving? 47 minutes. 47. That's useful. And we've already seen snow in the distance. Yeah. It's so cool. The snow and palm trees. Oh, it's even prettier now. Yeah, it looks really good. <laughs> That's um, amazing. Yeah, it's, I mean, so far it's going well. I mean, we just got started. Our efficiency has dropped um, a lot lower than, than normal. And it's like, we I can tell, we can hear the wind. We can see the wind and the trees. Um, so we're already getting some effects of the wind uh, and the car advises us that it's recommending two stops now. One of those stops is at a Circle K, which I'm sort of excited to try out a Circle yeah. K charger. So we, we may do that. Um, I don't know if I have the app because I had it on my old phone. I don't have it on the new phone, but we've never stopped at Circle K before. They're doing a really good job uh, expanding the network in the Southeast, but they've also started opening them up out here in California. But I don't know. I'm really excited. And then and then it was like the next stop would be Baker. So instead of doing just Barstow, it's like one in Victorville, one in uh, Baker and skipping Barstow. So we, we may do that. Um, it's uh, 64 miles to the Circle K, which is another 45, 50 minutes. That and sounds good for me. I could go to the bathroom. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with multiple stops. And actually we have kind of a selfish reason to want to stop in multiple places. And that is because we're helping out the Electric Vehicle Association. They're doing this Valentine's Day thing. I should take the tags off those before I do it. So we want to find people at uh, with various EVs at charging stations and just get a photo of them holding a heart. Like, I love my EV. And then we're going to send it to the, uh, the EVA, the Electric Vehicle Association. They are, they are a fantastic organization. They're national, but there are local chapters that you can join and they have all sorts of cool benefits for members, but it's just, it's very fun. So we're participating. So if we go to multiple um, stations, then we get more coverage and maybe we see more people and they'll well, be willing to hold a heart. Although I think the, the Circle K is relatively small versus Baker, which is but big. But we can accost other, no, they need EVs. Uh, so, so like one small, <laughs> one big. Barstow is, I think, 10 stations, so it's decent size. Baker would be great. Maybe we'll do that on the way back. Yeah, and Baker, <laughs> you were, it's co-located with a very large Tesla station. So that was always good to stop at to, to get lots of EVs, but. Oh or, my gosh, there are tumbleweeds all over the place. This is a, a rather blustery journey. And this is, uh, I, I was mentioning that last time we were in a Model Y and using autopilot a lot, of course. Now we're back in the Maki. Look at all the tumbleweeds over on the left side. Oh, wow. They're all like, can you guys see that? I'm sure you can. Yeah. They're all pushed against the side of the road. They're quite big. I guess big. there's like nothing over there on the side. We, we don't want to hit them. <laughs> So uh, we didn't have this, you know, we didn't see any when we were in the Model Y, but uh, I had to dodge one uh, about five miles ago. Yeah. And it sort of points out one of the things I really like about Blue Cruise is that it let me like swerve completely around it quickly. Um, and I didn't have to like disengage uh, the, the autopilot, cruise control, whatever you want to call it. Someone and must have just hit one. It's yeah. like tumbleweed debris. It, it, this is tumbleweed really interesting. Yes. So, um, but yeah, that, I mean, that's like, I, I just basically swerved around it. I took control. Uh, the, and then as soon as I got back toward uh, the center of the lane, Blue Cruise was ready to, to re-engage. So it let, me, it let me do my emergency maneuver. Um, and it was just nice and smooth. Yeah, it was. I was filming at the time and it wasn't Did bad you? at all. Yeah. No, I didn't catch it because like as you swerved, I was like, I should sit back. <laughs> like leaning forward in a way that would be kind of dangerous if you're avoiding things, I guess. Ooh, is it a circus? No. I don't know. So the Electric Vehicle Association, we are extra excited um, <clears throat> as I clear my throat. We are members of the Electric Vehicle Association. Anyone can be a member, it's super cool. And each year they do these awards. It's just very cool um, awarding the EV community in various categories. And we just found out that we were nominated. We didn't even know this. And we won the EV Road Tripper Ambassadors of the Year for 2023. Super cool. So cool. And literally they awarded it last night uh, or yesterday, the day before we leave on a road trip, which is 
epic. Yeah, and we're, we're really excited. We're going to, um, they have their annual meeting at the end of January in Carlsbad, which is close to us. So we're going to participate in all of that. But uh, it also means, like, I feel like there's extra pressure to do road trips this year. So incentive. Incentive, yes. <laughs> so we, we want to do uh, some more road trips this year. Um, this is the first of hopefully several. Who knows how many we actually get to do because, you know, jobs and budget. Yeah. But uh, we're going to we're going to try to at least do short ones. Um, and if time and budget allows, we can do some longer ones. Um, and maybe, you know, at some point there'll be, uh, you know, like Blue Cruise 1.4. We're on Blue Cruise 1.0 right now. Uh, hopefully we'll have access to the Tesla supercharger network. So those are all reasons to take road trips. Plus, you know, like seeing family or sightseeing or. Whatever. Yeah. It's interesting because like, I I wish we could road trip more, but I think we probably road trip realistically um, what a lot of people do, right? Like you work in your job and then occasionally you can take a longer time for a road trip. Um, I'd love to road trip all the time though, but we certainly have smaller spots uh two hour road trips whatever three hour trips um but we have grand aspirations for 2024 so we'll have to see how that goes yeah it, it's always interesting to see um what people consider a long road trip what people consider a road trip at all um, i think we sort of come up like when i ask people uh anything that requires a charge to get there or get back that's sort of a little bit vague uh, I know, and some people have said like requires a charge at the destination. So like if you are driving to someone's house and you will have to charge there, that's a road trip. Yeah, and yeah. then uh, some people said if it's an overnight trip. So what is your definition of a, a road trip? I think you I know, think for us, uh, yeah, I sort of see it as like you know we're going to Vegas. I think this is very typical for a lot of people. It's about three hundred miles from our house. Um, if you go much further than that, a lot of times you just want to fly. Uh, the Bay Area from San Diego, I think it's like 450 miles or something like that. I don't, I don't know off the top of my head, um, but I consider that a road trip. And but it's, I'm also torn of like, would it be easier to fly up there? Oh yeah, I guess. Well, that also like a place that might have hard parking, whatever, it changes the dynamic. But there's day trip and there's road trip. Right. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah, there's day trip. You could go for a two, three hour journey or whatever. Um, you have to let us know what you think. It's sort of like the sandwich hot dog thing. It doesn't yeah. really matter, but <laughs> And I'm just noticing that, like that stretch or this stretch of road is like really noisy. It is, and we're talking to you guys now. So like, hopefully it's not so bad. But yeah. it, it, it does remind me like doing a lot of the comparisons with the um, Model Y, since we just did this trip three months ago in the Model Y, uh, it it was noisy the whole way, and we didn't really notice until we were editing the video. And I'm like, this segment's going to be edit, uh, yeah, uh, rough. we're going to regret recording at this segment. <laughs> so apologize My for bad. the road noise here, <laughs> but it, in in general, um, it felt like the Model Y was a lot noisier. But maybe we just had a lot of pavement noise like this, but. We'll, we'll sort of see for the whole trip. Yeah. Oh, we got smoother road. So. Oh, much better. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just as soon as I was complaining about the noisy road, we switched to some quiet road. No. Oh, now back to the noisy road. Well, there is. Okay, can you hear the difference? Oh. <laughs> so I'm sure we said it before. Um, I know we've said it before. When we are doing. This lane will be quieter. I can tell just by looking at it. There we go. When we're doing road trips, we try to make the auditory experience as good as possible for you. When we're doing car reviews, we try not to edit the sound in the cabin too much um, because we want to have sort of a consistent comparison. So you can see like one video with the Lexus uh, RZ450E versus the Mach-E. Like you want to be able to have a comparison without us like heavily editing. This, however, is not great. So it's probably a good time for us to end this segment and give you some amazing views of tumbleweeds getting hit by and everybody just hit the brakes so yeah. let's, let me fo focus on driving and we'll talk to you shortly
All right, the car decided we needed to stop a little bit shorter. Part of that, like I think our efficiency, this is like the one of the worst segments we've had since we bought the Mach-E. Um, wind was gusty, you saw the tumble, tumbleweeds. We do have some new tires on the car that are relatively new. Sometimes new tires can cut into your efficiency, but um, even so, like we've had a little bit of, um, you know, just around town experience with these tires and it's a little bit lower, but 1.9, I think on this segment, like I would expecting like maybe 2.4. So that's pretty low. Um, wind really does hurt EVs a lot, uh, but we went 105.1 miles. We're finishing at 37% battery. Uh, we have uh, a 70, uh, uh, 99 miles to our next charger, 76 miles. So um, I think it's having a stop in Baker now. So Yay. skipping Barstow, doing Ooh. Victorville and Baker. Um, but we're, we're going to go ahead and plug in. Uh, it's just a Circle K here. There's not a lot around here, but I'm really excited to try out the Circle K chargers. This is a 180 kilowatt charger. Um, I believe it's shared. So if somebody with Chatamo plugs in next to us, um, it will uh, slow down. But let's go ahead and get uh, set up. I'm going to go ahead over here. We do have the Circle K app that we installed. So I should be able to, this is a B available to charge. Um, I think it's like one of those where I go plug in and then, then activate, but. So it even says right here, start the charging session, then connect the, the cable. This is two, which I'm assuming it means B. Uh, connect and swipe. All right, hopefully this is it. Set my phone down. I heard it okay. lock here. A nice cable management. Yeah, it's actually making it a bit hard to pull out. Oh, that sucks. Um, but not bad. Waiting to hear some sounds. Yeah, <laughs> I actually didn't look closely in the app and I was trying to activate that one. So now let's see if this one will activate. Oh, it's saying card payment. We don't want to do card payment, but I could because it's the same price. Verifying, yeah, we'll just do that. Charging. Authorization successful, preparing to charge, setting up communication with the car. Oh, I hear it clicking. This is an interesting whole new experience. Like I'm so used to using Electrify America on yeah. road trips. We're used to the sounds, we're used to the process. So every time it's a little different with something new. Charging, we're at 37%. What's the speed? Come on What's now. What's the speed? There we go, 74. Cool. Come on. This is a 180 kilowatt station. I would hope to get like 120 something out of this. There Ooh, we go. Yeah, oh, 141. 141. Nice quick jump. Okay. Well, we're going to trust that these are good. And because I need to go in and go to the bathroom, especially it got chilly. So, yeah, this is a human I think guided break as well. Like we were ready. Yeah, it's like 45 degrees. I really need to go in. Um, so, We'll just monitor it and see. I can monitor it on Ford Pass. I don't know if I can monitor it on the Circle K app because I think I just activated it with the phone because the, the app wasn't uh, being responsive. So anyways, let's go in. Thank you. We don't need any snacks. We just need the restroom and getting some charge. So Patrick is checking in. It's kind of interesting. There's no more regular charge. So now we're just going to check in on plug share like you do. We came outside because we don't want to buy anything. There's nothing we need. Um, it's kind of sad. We're the only people here. The only EV. I was like, worried it might be busy, but there's two chargers and we're the only ones. So. Yeah, and an i7 popped in and we got excited and then they dropped someone off and left. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure what they were doing. Um, <laughs> maybe an employee. Maybe they charge later. That'd be interesting yeah, to us. And there's a lot of ICE vehicles here though, not to spin too much, but there's a whole line of people um but no evs so it's just us and we've been here uh 21 minutes we're getting close to 80 percent um Ooh. and i think we're going to go to 80 and then uh we'll see uh still planning on stopping in baker yay with the wind between baker and uh, vegas today the the 40 mile per hour winds i like we're gonna we're gonna top it up well not top it up but well especially if we're at 1.9 Efficiency again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, oh, I'm sure in that stretch we will be. Yeah. 
Um, but actually, let's show the wheels real oh, quick. Oh yeah, look. So we've posted on social media, but this is the first time in a video that these wheels have made an appearance. They are from Martian. I think their MW05 is their the model number. Um, uh, Drew from Martian Wheels sent them out to us to just basically borrow them and give them a try for a bit, uh, which also means there were some tires on here. The Yokohama uh, Advan Apex V601s, I believe is what they are. They're the same size as the GT Performance Edition. So it's a, still a 20-inch wheel, 245, 45s. Um, so it hasn't really affected our range much, except that uh, I think it's a little bit lower. These tires are, are relatively sticky and new tires can also affect your range. Um, the wheels themselves are forged. So not only do they look good, but they're very strong and very light. So we probably uh, lost quite a bit of weight in our wheels, our wheel weight. So that's actually really nice. Helps with performance, uh, the way the suspension feels. B subtle differences, but very nice. Um, and I think they just look fantastic. They, of course, have multiple colors. But if you're interested, we'll put a link down to Martian Wheels in the description. Um, they started out on Tesla, but they've expanded to Rivian and Hyundai, Kia, Maki. Uh, the, the GT Performance Edition is the one that has some really fantastic looking wheels. But if you have a premium or select, one of the best things you can do I think is to add some nice looking wheels. These are these are more on the higher end. There's some other options out there if you don't want to go high end. But if you want like lightweight, super strong, really good looking, check out Martian Wheels. And let us know what you think of the color. I was not sure. I mean, I'm partial to bronze anyways, but yeah. I wasn't sure how I was going to look with the blue. So but I used to have a WRX. Mine was silver. But if you remember, a lot of the WRX STIs. Uh, 2011, 2012, even before then, they would do like a blue paint with a gold wheel. So this sort of reminds me of that a little bit. Um, like if it were me, like I, I might go with the, like uh, they have a gun metal. I think that looks fantastic. Ooh, yeah. But this is growing on me a lot. Like I, I think this would look so good with a cyber orange for sure. Oh or yeah, red. yeah. Yeah. You have to let us know, yeah. vote down below. <laughs> And we are at 25 minutes. We just hit 80. It slowed down to 37 kilowatts. Um, with Electrify America, it usually slows down to about 43, but uh, not, not too bad for at 80%. But we have enough definitely to make it to Barso. Uh, so we might Baker. as well. Baker. <laughs> BA words, I guess. Sorry. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, hit stop. And then we'll uh, do a, a, a charging summary and a route planning segment. Uh, right now I can just tell you 39.942 kilowatt hours, 25 minutes and 33 seconds. Does it say the price? Nope, it doesn't say the price. Uh, so I'll have to check and see what it charged me for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, I think it was uh, 49 or 59 cents. I can't remember now. I, I don't Dang. normally pay attention. So All right, let's uh, get let's in. Go. It's cold. Obey traffic laws. <laughs> so the car is all ready to go to the next segment. Like I didn't have to resume navigation or anything. But let's go ahead and redo our route planning just to see. Sometimes it recalculates um, like as soon as we get out of the parking lot or whatever. But oh, don't want to go to chargers. We want to go to my trips. I'm still just heading to Las Vegas. So I have that one here. And this is sort of one of the cool things is, is like I have my destination of Las Vegas. Um, even though I set it originally in Oceanside, it just reprograms uh, it from uh, our current spot. And if we go, what does it say? Chargers being added. Let's hit details. It says 115 minute charge. Uh, it's saying charge at EVgo in Baker, which is weird. I'm not sure why it's not doing Electrify America. That's sort of strange. I think one of the things they're trying to do now is uh, route you to fast chargers, but it's also giving priority to ones that uh, have a higher rating. If I'm not mistaken, uh, I'll have to double check that. But I think that's what they're doing. That might be why the EVgo is showing up is because it probably has a better rating than the uh, Electrify America station. But it's 99 miles. We have 176 miles of range. It's saying we only need to charge to 54% there. We'll probably go ahead and go, uh, as, as long as we're not taking up a spot, we'll probably go up to 80% there as well. Um, 
Vegas is going to be busy. We're going to be busy. So uh, we want to go in with a decent amount of charge, although we'll probably charge when we get to Vegas tonight. So let's hit the road. Um, this time I'm going to remember to reset the trip so that when we hop out, I don't have to try to remember this before we go. But anyways, we just hit reset, we're ready to go. Woo, let's go. Tesla supercharger we should have stopped at. Oh, yeah. Woo, that's nice looking. Yeah. Instead, it's this, we could put us at this one that's like, yeah, right here. Uh, Remember that little yeah. one right next to. As the truck is in front of us, but right there. We just passed Interstate 40. Yeah, the start of Interstate 40, which I was just telling Liv, uh, it goes all the way to the East Coast, all the way to North Carolina, about 40 miles from where I grew up in Fedwell, North Carolina, where my brothers still live. Hopefully we get to do some road tripping over there. I don't think we get to drive all of Interstate 40, but one day that would be oh, very cool. Yeah. I've That'd done it. That'd be super cool. Have you? Oh, yeah. is that your 27 hour thing? Uh, part of it, yeah. Ah, dang. It'd be yeah. interesting in an EV too. This is kind of cool scenery, grungy. Uh, but we had a great stop at Victorville Circle Victorville. K. Victorville. <laughs> I was like, name which escapes me. I can't say Victorville, and you can't say Baker or Boston. And now this is Barstow, by the oh, way. We're in Barstow. So we we could have okay. stopped here. Uh, we have uh, sixty-two miles to go. We have 117 miles of battery. Our efficiency is way better. We a little bit less wind, less elevation, and we're at 2.4 miles per kilowatt hour. Nice. But that that 1.9 was a bit shocking. Um, and I think a lot of people know, like if you're going on a road trip, you sort of want to check the weather, make sure it's not going to snow or rain. Uh, but with an EV, you know, cold temperatures and wind or a couple of other elements that you want to check out before you uh, head out. If you're in a particularly windy area, like on the East Coast, like when I lived in North Carolina, uh, we never had like many days where you'd have just super windy times, but like we're getting ready to go into this stretch. It looks like it's like right after Baker is where the winds really kick up. Um, so it's something to keep a, a, an eye out for and really account for in your um, route planning. The car will make some adjustments, but it's like you wanna be extra cautious when it's windy like that. And you can counter some of that by reducing your speed. Cause like the, the wind resistance is such a huge factor for EVs. So if you're doing you know, 75 miles an hour, like the speed limit is here, or actually it's 70 right through here. Uh, but if you're doing like 70 miles an hour and you got a 30 mile per hour wind, that's a headwind, that's like 110 miles an hour. You don't have to necessarily like the rolling resistance and stuff like that, but it's, it's like driving extra fast and not getting the benefit out of it. And it just has a greater effect on EVs because of the, the energy density of the batteries. Um, the efficiency takes a bigger hit, but right now, again, we're, well, now we, 2.3 miles, 2 per, .3 kilowatt miles hour. per kilowatt hour. So, uh, but Circle K, I, I like the station, um, two stalls. Of course, you know, we're hoping that there's more and more stalls uh, added, but like if there were, you know, as Circle K deploys more and more, and then you have like, uh, what is it? Flying J is adding some, I guess more people start adding these stations. We don't, we, we won't necessarily need like 40 stalls everywhere. We just need two here, two here. It still would be nice because there were like yeah. so many gas pumps there, but it's awesome to see charging stations incorporated with uh, a place like Circle K because we could go in, we could get food, coffee, just like you do with an ice car. 
Um, the thing that bugged me though was that you had to get a code for the restrooms. I don't understand. Maybe if you guys have an opinion, you can share. Um, but I don't understand why that would be beneficial. Like there wasn't, it didn't seem like an area where there were a lot of people. I understand when you're in a dense city in an urban environment that sometimes you need to do that because there might be a lot of, um, a lot more people there, right? But this was like in the middle of nowhere. I mean, yeah, yeah. I was sort of surprised, you know, back in the day, like you'd always have to get the, the key on a stick or whatever to go to the bathroom. I it's sort of like, I, I wish they would just get over that. Like loves, I love loves. <laughs> it's like you could just walk in and everything you need is right there and they have showers often, right? Uh, like having access to facilities is great, but Circle K was cool, wheelchair accessible. Um, there was like a, a ramp up on the side by the charging station. And there was, correct me if I'm wrong, there was like a an extra space next to each spot, wasn't there? Well, so uh, there was only two charging stations, but what they did is they, they had it so, um, you, you could pull up and have two charging from the same one at the same time. I'm not sure, I got to check that out because it, it had Chattamo and CCS and you could activate each one. I don't know if it's like uh, Electrify America. Hmm. I, I, sh I should research. <laughs> we'll update you uh, later in the video on that because I, I want to find out. Uh, yeah. Probably not, but it, it just basically meant you could park whatever side was more convenient for your particular EV. I certainly was surprised that there was no one there. So, ooh, there's a ghost town road, right lane. Mm. Exciting. <laughs> Don't you want to pull off and go check it out? What's that like? Uh, so we're hitting some more traffic, but I'm excited for the Baker charging station because hopefully we'll hit more people. Not hit. We will um, find, encounter. encounter more people, uh, more EV owners. Hopefully we can have someone take a photo with the heart for the EVA. That'll be super fun. Uh, and just fun to see other EV people, EV owners, maybe give out some fancy ponies. I don't think there's been a, no, there's maybe been like one or two times that we haven't given out a fancy pony a baker. But typically there's a Maki there, huh? Well, we haven't been through there a lot with the fancy ponies, so. True. Maybe we'll pick yeah. up some more even, hard not to. All right, it seems like we are in the traffic -y spot and Patrick is focusing as you should, which means it's probably a good time for us to go, right? Yeah, this is a quick one, just check yeah. again. Uh, we'll see you at Baker in a little bit. Okay, just to interrupt our scenery for a minute. Uh, the car has done like three times in a row, like warned me that we don't have enough range to make it to Baker, even though I'm showing like a 59 mile buffer. So there's a new feature. If you go to your app drawer, click on the home button, you can record feedback and send it to Ford. Um, and it'll take a little bit of the car's data and uh, take my voice recording. So we're gonna do that live. Well, Recording record it. likes, dislikes, or suggestions about the experiences with your vehicle, and then select send. Hi, we are driving on I-15. We're about 22 miles from the Baker charging station. It says we have 81 miles of battery, but I've had like three warnings in a row from the car that the battery level is critical and I won't reach my destination charger, even though I have about a 59 mile buffer right now. So not sure why it's doing that. I even canceled navigation and started it again and then got the error again saying, I don't have enough battery range to make it 20 some miles. So anyways, just wanted to send that feedback. Thank you. Thank you, your feedback was set. And this should be rolling out on all mach -E's. I think it might be coming into Lightnings at some point uh, or maybe already has, but very cool feature. Uh, you don't have to just use it for complaints. You can use it for compliments or whatever, uh, feature requests. Whatever you want, it's just to record feedback and have it sent to Ford. And I have verified that like somebody will listen to every single one of these messages. You may not get any feedback directly. Um, so like if you're having a problem where, you know, you need to get the car serviced, that's not the way to do it. Still call your dealer or schedule service with your dealer. But this is a good way to just, uh, you know, send Ford some info.
We're here. The car wanted to route us to the EV go station, but we decided we want to come over to Baker. So I've, I've manually selected this. Uh, this trip and trip are the same. Look at our efficiency. It's 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour, even with the, the wind. Um, we had a little bit of better elevation on that. 96.4 miles took us an hour and 25 minutes. We are now at 32% battery with 61 miles left of buffer. Um, we're going to charge, uh, I'm not sure what we need to charge up to, but we're going to probably charge to 80% as long as we don't have any issues. Um, I'm going to, uh, there, there's a couple of ways that I could activate this charge. I can just plug in, it'll start charging, or I could do this new thing called uh, charge assist and uh, activate the charging here. It takes a second for it to load up because it's actually pulling in the uh, chargers from the, the cloud. Uh, and there's not great coverage out here. Uh, but what I'm actually going to do is activate the charge with my phone and using the EA app. And that's because I'm an EA member and I want the, the discounted rate. Um, and we're at charger seven. So I'm going to go ahead and get out and do that. And there's, there's the, the charge assist now loading. It took a second, but anyways, we, yeah, there it is. Plug and charge, or I could just activate manually. Anyways, uh, let, let's hop out and get that done. This wind is no joke. Uh, so we're at charger seven. Swipe to start charge, processing payment. Charger error. I might just have to do plug and charge. Let's try this again. Uh, it's saying an error. So let's just plug in and I'll deal with that later. Connecting the vehicle. I don't know how windy this is picking up on the microphone, but. Probably a lot. <laughs> oh, there are doggies behind you. Oh yeah. Three little doggies. There you go. Oh, I disabled plug and charge. Oh, shoot. <laughs> there we go. Authorized. Yay. So there's a lot of ways to activate this. I went through all of them. Uh, I disabled <laughs> plug and charge because I didn't want to get charged the extra rate, but I ended up getting the extra rate anyways, the more expensive rate. Uh, but I want to enter in my phone number, so don't show this on camera. Cool, we can't see it anyways. We're going to look at the dogs. Actually, let's look around. And that way I'll get a receipt when we're done, but I can also monitor this in the Ford Pass. Oh. There's an R1S, that's Yay. looking good. Yay, and the blue, I love it. So now we can look again. It's ramping up slowly, 49. And we're at 32%. 32%. Cool. It's at 81, 92, 107, 121, 136, 147, 149. And will we hit 160? Man, I'm freezing. I know. It's just we're, a wind. We're big wimps, but yeah, it is very windy. It's probably awful on the mics. 156, 157. I'm going to say that's good. Yeah, that's good. Let's go. 158. <laughs> we have some stuff to do. Yeah, we have stuff to do, including yeah, in the go. bathroom. It's sunny and lovely now. The wind just disappeared. I know, just for a second. And all the birds came out. It's like a magic, a so, magical. I see an e-tron on a flatbed. Uh-oh. I saw one pulled over just a mile or two out of town. So I'm like, did they run out of juice? Oh, geez, let's go find out. Yeah, and we saw a lucid that crashed. Yeah. I looked on Twitter to see if I could find any details. Ah, there's the wind. Yeah. And I didn't see anything. I hope whoever that was is okay. As always, I love this charging station. It's so cool just being around all the EVs, all the Teslas, all the everybody's. Yeah, they're dropping it off. I think it ran out of juice. Yeah. Hopefully we can say hi and see how they're doing. Yeah, they may not be in the best mood. Probably not. <laughs> I'm so curious. They have a dog. 
Yeah, I know I wouldn't want to be on camera if I Probably <laughs> ran not. out of juice. So the Rivian moved. The same person they moved. There's another Rivian here, which is gorgeous. I'm loving this R1S party that's going on. Tell us what your pick is. R1S or R1T? <clears throat> I think R1T personally for me. ID4 looks so cute. Audi, Boston. Hello. We gotta stop and finish. Actually, if you, I mean, oh. we're gonna be here a couple more minutes. We can get a couple more bits of juice, but I don't think there's anybody to talk to. Let's get a little juice. Everybody's like. We could go look at the Tesla. It was less windy down there. Maybe it's blocked by the charger. Everybody's in their car though. Okay. Should we just go ahead? Sure. All right. <laughs> we must. We just hit 90%. Uh, which isn't because the car needed it or whatever. It's just like, we just, that's how long it took to eat. Uh, 24.96, 53.27 kilowatt hours. It was 42 minutes. Um, I was monitoring inside. And you guys may not hear all any of this because man, it's the wind is back. That's why we have the dead mouse. But uh, yeah, it's still pretty crazy. Cool. All so, right, let's go. Yeah, I think we'll go and I can at least move out of the way. I mean, okay. Wow, we are windswept. <laughs> it's so, not even that cold. Here comes a Ionic 5. It is cold. We're getting close I'm to full so here. Bummed. Um, we're about to pull out. I'm so bummed though because we have all this stuff from the EVA that we want to take photos with people uh, for Valentine's Day, but it's so windy that everyone's in their cars. <laughs> Let me move out of the way so this guy can. Okay. Oh, he's going down there. Okay, we're good. Also, the Etron person has the cutest husky puppy, but uh, as Patrick's point was good, they're probably having a terrible time. I'm very curious, like, what happened um, with their car? Like, what happened? Yeah, the kid. But um, maybe they don't want to answer, but their dog is really cute. Yeah. Let's do some route planning real quick because we have 200 miles of range, 90% battery. Uh, All right, let's flip. So let's go to Las Vegas. I knew this was safe, but. Anyways, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, 82 miles, but I think it's about 90 miles if we drive. Yeah, 94 miles, no traffic or alerts, although we know it's gonna get windy. I was checking it out inside with the Windy app. Is that um, actually called Windy? Yeah, it's like Windy app. It's pretty popular. I'll put a link down below. If you are doing stretches like this, it's probably not a bad idea to have that installed. Uh, no charging, of course, um, we have, like a 105 mile buffer, it, it'll probably a, a adjust once we get on the road slightly downward. Um, and I know that's a, a little bit of uphill. I'm gonna move just to see, like, is there anybody outside of your car that Liv can talk to? Yay! And, all right, that puppy is really cute. Oh, so cute. <laughs> he was just getting picked up and it was like, Oh, so fluffy. Yeah, that guy there did not want to be on camera. Everybody else is hiding. Oh, the guy, he was okay. Uh, he was just on the phone. Oh, okay. Or, like his family looked like they might have been sociable, but he was doing other things. Um, there's a guy that just pulled up in the Ionic 5 if you want to try that. And sure. these people may be. So let me come over here. Just be careful. Opening the, the door. The door. us that it is absolutely freezing it's, it's freezing it says 56 i think it's like 50 actually windy it's, us. it's windy and cold we ran out and tried to get some tesla people to do the the heart thing but they're all sitting in their car hiding from the yeah the cold uh we did get a couple of uh ccs cars and the e-tron did run out of juice so i oh. helped push a few feet i didn't talk to the guy he was driving or as we were pushing but we got him to a, a stall, but man, rough day, I, I'm sure. And yeah, Patrick saw them pushing as we were walking up here, so he ran over to help. Yeah. Um, yeah, I hope the day gets better, and I hope that toe was covered and all that. Yeah, <sighs> exactly. All right, we got to get on the road. We just 
ended up messing around here for a little bit of time. So it was fun. If it wasn't windy, so windy, we would have stayed longer. All right, flippity flip. Oh, he's walking his dog. He's walking his little floop. Oh, it's so cute. I have terrible news. What? Do you know? No. <laughs> there are no fancy ponies at the Bacon Tragic Station. Oh, did you look around? I looked a bit. Okay. I looked. I did the tour of the, the toy area just a little bit. I mean, maybe they moved them, but I didn't see those. So the benefits could be like maybe someone else got them and is giving out fancy ponies, which would be great. Or... The bags of fancy ponies we now have are the only fancy ponies in existence. Well, by the time we get through those, we could evolve into something else that we give out. We could. I guess Maybe. we could. Maybe we could 3D print something. I don't know. I'm quite attached to my little ponies. But anyways, Baker was pretty great, though, as per usual. The Dairy... I mean, there's Dairy Queen and... What is it? Something... Jersey Mike's? Yeah. Jersey Mike's was the only thing for the longest time because they were renovating Dairy Queen. But now there's uh, Dairy Queen open, which has burgers and stuff. So we sort of split up, got our own thing. I got like a flamethrower burger, which was delicious. I kind of like Jersey Mike's because you can get something with a little bit of greenery on it. And I got chicken. <laughs> but it's, as soon as we come out of Baker, we have a decent climb. We climbed to 4,000 feet. I don't know what Baker's at, but I know we went through 3,000 and 4,000 feet um, elevation. And the temperature dropped to 40 degrees and our efficiency dropped all the way to 1.1. Now, as you can sort of tell, we're going down a little bit. And no wonder my ears are popping. <laughs> it's 1.3 miles per kilowatt hour. Um, th this is always a really bad segment. The car still has an 82 mile buffer. so. It was calculating that in and knew that we'd come out of there and have a really bad uh, segment. But you can tell we got a little bit of up there. Uh, it varies, but yeah, I'm glad we are charged to 90%. And just noticing like the Whoa. traffic on the other side, that's the like Sunday afternoon traffic coming oh, back yeah. from Las Vegas that we've done a few times. Uh, the good thing about CES being during the week is that we're going up on a Sunday and coming back on a Friday. So that's great. Um, the bad thing is, is that we are literally starting the year and using an entire week of our vacation days. So that sucks. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a bit rough to like start off January and, and burn through a whole, a whole week. week of vacation. Yeah. We, we were thinking about, you know, going later in the week, but... We hear there's some EV stuffs on so uh, Monday and Tuesday, so we decided to come uh, up early. Oh, that's a nice looking rest area. A lot nice of trucks though. Oh, the valley, no, I didn't get it. Oh. Yeah. Pardon me. Oh yeah, but so the stuff with CES, like it's hard to know everything that's going on and it's hard to gain access, just like with any of the car stuff, the auto shows, any of the events happening. It's like, you don't entirely know what's happening and don't know how to get into all of it but we're trying and so there are a couple big things that we really want to catch and our schedule is packed but meticulously packed yeah. patrick has we're using notion and he's made us like basically this incredible document like just jam-packed with schedules and locations and like so we know that we can accomplish as much as possible um I don't know if we will. We'll do our best. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. You'll, you'll know before we do. Cause yeah. We, You're probably yeah. laughing in the comments like, ha ha, you got one video out. <laughs> yeah. Hope not. Um, but going back to the road trip stuff, uh, because I keep trying to sort of make the comparisons with the Model Y trip that we did, uh, because, it's, you know, now it's like sort of side by side. When we went to Vegas, we had two charging stops in the Model Y. 
partially because we had a friend that we were meeting up with, but it, 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 it you know, on the way back, we did one stop. I think we may do one stop on the way back. We'll see how it, it works out. But I think that's sort of interesting that it's like fairly comparable and the charging stops are fairly felt like about the same because we had a really long charging stop when we met our friend. So that part feels the same. And I still, it's like everybody talks so much hype about autopilot, but I love Blue Cruise. Um, I have my hand on the steering wheel, but I don't have to. But it's windy, so I think it's a good thing. Yeah, I've been doing nice that because it's it's windy. You, you can feel it uh, making adjustments for the, the gusty, gusty winds. Um, but there, you know, uh, another point with uh, the road back there, it's like there was a bunch of like, rough pavement potholes and i was like well let me just move blues cruise over and i just held my hand on Did it you say blues cruise blue, blue cruise over um and that's one of the things that really bugged me with autopilot was you have to leave it on if you want to adjust slightly you just can't do it you either turn it off or you have to pick or stick with what autopilot where it's putting you in the lane and uh we had one segment going back the other direction, I remember that was really annoying me and I just turned off autopilot because they were doing construction and like the the lines uh, or the the road had the, like the grooves and I wanted to move over, you know, like you, you can't move oh, over yeah. slightly. So it was like, brr, brr, brr. and I'm like, let me just turn it off for 20 miles because I just didn't want to drive on that. Blue Cruise, I could sort of keep my hand on the steering wheel and adjust over slightly. So it uh, just makes it really nice. Um, we're going back up a slight incline now. Our, it, it was at 1.4 miles per kilowatt hour. Oh, it's it back. Dropped to 1.3, now back to 1.4. Uh, 1.3. Uh, <laughs> keeping it right about the speed limit, just so that nobody tattles on us or anything. <laughs> I do think it's interesting, like, what? 4,000 feet of elevation. Uh-huh. Again. Uh, everyone is passing us. Uh, they're passing us all over. Patrick is two miles over the speed limit. Um, this is what happens when you're in an EV. It is most efficient to drive at 70 um, ish <laughs> miles an hour and people are going to overtake you and that's okay. It's just a different thing and you'll get used to it. Well, and it's, you know, and there a little bit of, it's like balancing charging stops versus, you know, whatever. Uh, we are definitely not in a rush today. Yeah. So, like, you know, I may like speed up a little bit more if I were in a rush, but I'm like, let me just chill out a little bit and it's, it's fine. And it also like, because we're filming, uh, and I'm still paying attention to the road, even though Blue Cruise is handling a lot, uh, you know, going a little bit slower means I don't have to worry as much about like changing lanes and whatever. And normally, and if anybody wants to know, like normally I would camp, all, camp out over the right lane for something like this, but this is like right through here, designated like truck lane. So um, I'm sticking in this lane. As you which, can see, perfect timing. Yeah. Slow vehicle, so. And mostly that's, you know, if you come across a truck doing like 45 miles an hour, sometimes it can be hard to get over into this lane um, with the line of traffic. So, but normally I would be over far right. Uh, I, I am, you know, sitting in the middle for a little bit of a long time uh but yeah we we only got 63 miles left to vegas these are like relatively easy road trips we're familiar with the route we know the charging stations we like stopping at baker yeah however i am bummed that it was windy like i love baker and i love <laughs> i love to socialize at baker i love to see what other cars there are um there were a ton of cool evs and uh, just before we pulled up, there were uh, two people in a Lucid that were filming. And I was like, what are they filming for? Yeah. It's so fun. Like, it's such a thoroughfare and it's it's cool. Um, but because of the wind and the cold, no one was out. And so <laughs> uh, we definitely would have accosted more people with our hearts or just said hi in general. And, and I think people are tending to stay in their cars more this anyways. is what i was wondering because i'm like is it because it was windy and colder uh or is it because it's like the the shiny newness is starting to wear off of evs and it's just like i'm gonna get in the car right 
it seems to be like, I mean, before, like a year ago, I, it just seemed like we'd pull in and people would hop out and they'd be like, Hey, Ooh, as soon as we could, Ooh. before we could plug in or like, how do you like your Mach-E? Yeah. Now it just seems like everybody there's, we've seen so many varieties. Um, like what else? Yeah. I, you know, and, and I guess it it's true with us too. Cause like we've seen Ionic fives, we've seen Mercedes, we've seen Rivians. Yeah. So it isn't like, Oh my gosh, that's so brand new, but we still like to ask it. How do you yeah, like it? Totally. And it was nice that we got a couple of photos of people. We'll put them up. Um, there was a couple in their Ionic 5 and then uh, another couple in an ID4, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, they were all troopers because it really, I promise, it really was cold. So these people were like, hey, can you hold this for the Electric Vehicle Association? Bless the bless semester. But I hope that it's not trending, that we don't want to all hang out like it's the new water cooler. But if that is the case, and I'm sure the introverts out there are happy about that. So, win lose. Well, and, and it makes me think that that may be where we're going because uh, we we notice that sp- specifically at Baker because it's co-located with the Tesla supercharger that in the past, we'd walk past all the Teslas and they were always just like in their car. Yeah. Um, and sort of just waiting to go on uh, as soon as the charge was done. So now it seems like now we're seeing that with CCS cars. So maybe it's just the, the newness has worn off. But we're always, well, okay, until we get uh, NAX capabilities, we're always going to have variety at CCS sides and there won't be as much variety on the Tesla side, right? Um, right. But pretty soon, I think it'll be extra exciting again because it'll be like, oh, who's at the Tesla supercharger? What's going on? You know, it'll be extra exciting again. I'm curious how that's going to be. I, I, for the most part, it seems like our Tesla friends are very excited um, to, that we're going to be able to use the supercharger network. And some of them are for us. Yeah. Excited for us. And they're actually excited for themselves because like, I know some of them are like, I will never buy a car that doesn't have supercharger access. They don't say I will never buy a non-Tesla. They just want to have supercharger access. Uh, and I asked some people, I won't like out them, but they're pretty prominent Tesla owners. And they're like, absolutely, I'm excited. And I will, now I can consider other other brands potentially uh, because they'll have access. I, I did have a couple of people um, when I was talking about it on Twitter, which is just sort of like a cesspool of negativity at, at times. Um, but one person was literally was like, if I see a non Tesla, I will slash their tires, which I think it's a lot of, you know, well, that's destruction of property. So yeah, I, and, uh, don't like, do that. I don't, I don't think don't people like are really like that, but may, maybe they are, maybe they're not. I, I, I just, I think, I'm positive. I think people are actually will be excited as long as we're not like blocking like four spots yeah, trying to charge. Interesting. Uh, I, you know, for the most part, as I said, when I talk to people, they're like, oh, that's that's going to be so cool. They, I think they're a little bit more concerned about the bolts and the, you know, like ID fours um, and the ID fours because they're like, oh, they always charge 100 percent. I'm like, they only do that because they're getting free charging. They won't do that at a Tesla supercharger. Uh, but the bolts, they are 50 kilowatts and we'll be taking up a 250 kilowatt charger. But um, from the for the most part, I think it's not going to be an issue because there are some crowded superchargers in our area, but a lot of those are version two or urban chargers that we won't be using anyway. So, And speaking of which, you can trust that the moment we get the NAX adapter, we are going to be road tripping. So uh, keep it out. As soon as that happens, as soon as we can access, we are out there. We are on the road. Um, We're, we, we got some routes in mind, not planned, but like in mind that we know that are problem points. You're marked. Yeah. That, uh, for, for CCS cars. And one is uh, anything that goes like east of San Diego toward Phoenix, like has to stop at Quartzsite. Quartzsite is only four uh, EA stations and there there's been times that I've seen like two hour waits to charge and then from uh, SoCal up to Northern California depending on the time of year like on Thanksgiving weekend I saw 
some three plus hour waits for an EA charger. Um, and it's sort of frustrating because like just down the road or across the street or whatever, there's like 60, 70 Tesla chargers. It's quite full, but at least there was a lot more options out there. And our friend Fernando, um, he's canine education. You've probably seen him in, in various videos. He has an infinite blue mach -E. Uh, so they got stuck in Palm Springs waiting two hours to charge. So I'm not sure what the Tesla, what the supercharger situation is out there, but more variety, more options seem very important. <laughs> and speaking of, you know, crowded chargers, there's a runaway truck ramp. I always think those are cool. Um, but speaking of crowded superchargers, we're headed to Vegas. Um, it is going to be interesting because the EA chargers can get full out there and quite busy, especially the ones like on the south side of Las Vegas, like at the outlets, because um, that's your last good charging spot before you head out across the, the desert. Um, but what's interesting is, is like when we went there with the Model Y, we ran into the same problems where they, they like a lot of the stations, like four out of five stations that we were looking at were full or almost full. The only one that wasn't full was like in a paid parking lot, which I didn't want to have to deal with. So uh, it's, it's really interesting to see. Vegas just needs more chargers. Oh, so before we end. <laughs> before we end, this, this whole segment is quite long, but I'm going to turn this camera on so you can see. Patrick is very excited to talk about this. We've passed this, and we usually talk about it in every video. We left it out of one video, but this solar farm is super cool. It isn't uh, the, the, the typical solar array where all the panels are collecting electricity and just sending it directly into the grid. This one is really cool because those are mirrors reflecting to that central point. And from what I understand, I need to probably learn a little bit more about it, but it's basically molten salt in that point. It's heating that up. It's super, super hot between 5,000 and 1,000 degrees, I believe. Um, and because the salt, uh, the molten salt retains the heat so well, they can use that to produce energy for hours and hours and hours after the sun goes down. It's kept in like store underground storage tanks, I believe. Um, so even though it's solar, it can provide power throughout the night. And I forget how many this uh, array will, will power. And I think actually over there, the black ones are regular photo, photovoltaic uh, panels. But these over here, the shiny ones are the, the ones that are heating up the hot uh salt was so, there only one originally like did they start with one and build another uh th there's always been two going okay. through here the one on the other side of vegas on the north oh. side on 395 was a, a singular one i believe gotcha. um this is the uh inspection point that we always have to stop recording at coming the other <laughs> direction we're getting close to the nevada border but i i think that's so cool and there's another one that's in uh i think morocco I believe that's really huge and they're actually looking at, and I forget the details again, uh, but it, it's like they're going to use the power from that, the power uh, homes in England with a, a huge underground cable. That's but just crazy. crazy stuff. But uh, this is just really cool. I like, I, I was like, I just thought it was like heating up water and creating steam uh, and then just powering a steam uh, engine basically, but this is heating up salt, but then heats up water to create the, uh, like a and steam. And it's so true because you can literally see the, the sun light. rays. The what? The, like the, the sun the rays. The rays, or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It's very cool. It's that bright. Yeah, and this is like a, a little bit of a dusty day. Oh, yeah. So it's not as, as bright, but that's why you can see the rays uh, very clearly. Um, if you guys know more about that, look down below if if you want to google it um well actually i'll try to put a link in the description as well but there's there's videos on this as well if you look up like the uh the solar farm um near california nevada border it, it pops up that's how i found it i forget what it's called but i just think it's so cool like it's uh, molten salt i wouldn't have thought of that that and and apparently that's um one of like it's a stable uh, mineral that will stay as a liquid in a, without being like toxic. 
So there are other elements that could do that, but salt works out very well and it retains the temperature for, for a very long time. I wonder if we could get a tour of it. Would that that be cool? would be awesome. Yeah. Like maybe we'll try and investigate. Or if anyone knows, <laughs> what is in the back of the car? What is in the back? It looks. Are there swords? It looks like swords with crystals on them. Swords. That's so cool. Boy, oh, they're going to see us, huh? We got excited. Maybe. Or, <laughs> or a fun party, fun birthday party. Or a party. fun party. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay, so now you have that cool educational portion. If you know of any way to get a tour of that solar array, um, let us know. Either way, I think it's something we should look into. We could like go halfway to Vegas, tour the solar stuff, and then go to Vegas. Well, back in San Bernardino County, which is giant, but out there somewhere, uh, EA has a very large solar farm. And uh, I asked, I was like, is there a way to get a tour of that? And they said, we don't have any public tours available. I'm like, yeah, no, 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 not a public tour, like a media outreach it's thing. So, but yeah. we know people, we should be able to get a yeah. tour of that. Although that's, you know, may not be as exciting to you, but I would love to take a tour of some of this renewable energy stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, as well as east of San Diego, the Salton Sea in that area, there's huge lithium deposits. And there's some companies out there that are going to start mining lithium. They're doing research on how to do it most efficiently. I would love to get a tour of some of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let us know if you're interested in that. Um, we'll probably look into it anyways. Like, <laughs> like we said, we just like try to gain access to whatever we can. And some of that is cool stuff like that. So I think that would be interesting. To you can see his this track. This, yeah, yeah he's, he's wobbling and you can see it the tail wobbling. end is like being pushed. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, kudos to any truck driver in the wind. Woo. But okay, we've been talking forever and ever and ever. We should let you enjoy this windy, sandy, dusty, flat scenery. And we're going to like snap for a second and move forward to crossing into the Nevada border. So. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Welcome to Nevada. Burr, 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 burr. Oh, wait. Not yet. Burr. Not yet. Not yet. Burr. Okay. Now. Now. <laughs> uh, so we're in Nevada, and now we are going to enjoy the scenery. And, right? and this little bridge, oh. by the way, it's like a little train, not like roller coaster, a little bit maybe. But I, I saw a YouTube video where somebody took that, but I've never seen it like in action. So I still want to take that. I'm going to look into that. All right. See you in Vegas. Side note, do you like roller coasters? Because oh. we just started doing roller coasters, having access to Disney. And we did the one where you drop. I can't remember what it's called. Oh, the Tower of Terror. The Tower. It's not called the Tower oh, no, of Terror anymore. That, yeah. But like, you drop. I've been like way too scared to do that. We did it, and it was great. So, do you like roller coasters? Can you do the droppy things? Okay. Bye. Seven Magic Mountains. Woo! There it is. Navigate to Bandelay Bay. Which item would you like? Starting room to Mandalay Bay. I think that finding a parking took as long as the whole journey. <laughs> um, we decided just to come to the Mandalay Bay because there's some stuff going on tonight for CES, but mostly we can go ahead and pick up our badges at the location here. So that'll make it easier for tomorrow morning. Um, so this uh, from Baker was 86.6 miles, one hour, 26 minutes. 1.9 miles per kilowatt hour at 37% battery, 77 miles left. Uh, we were, you know, like when we left Baker, I think it said like an 82 mile buffer to get to Vegas, but uh, this wasn't our exact destination. So I don't know, uh, it was still fairly accurate, um, but 77 miles. Uh, there's a little bug right here. If you notice, uh, if anybody mm. wants, you know, it's gonna point it out, you don't need to. Um, this is due to one of the last updates with the Maki. They know about it, but like even at a standstill, it'll say like one miles per hour. So small little bug. It's I think it's funny. A lot of people are really upset by 
you know, something like that. But anyways, uh, I know they'll fix it. Not that big of a deal. I would leave feedback, but something like that that I know is already being tracked. I don't need to give feedback. I have a question that I wonder if people will ask. Does that mean that that one mile is added to your speed? Like if you're traveling at 55 yeah. miles an hour, are you actually traveling at 54? No, I think it's just a glitch. Okay. I think it's just a glitch um, with the, the zero miles per hour. So not that big of a deal. I know it'll get fixed in probably one of the next updates. But um, we're here in Vegas. Um, that's the end of our road trip. Um, thank you guys for following along. It's been a lot of fun. A fairly easy day. The wind wasn't really that big of a deal. Um, it, you know, it took us two stops in the Model Y, two stops in the Mach-E. Um, we had a nice lunch break. We could have left a little bit sooner. I mean, we finished with 37% battery um, getting to Vegas. We do have to charge sometime tonight, but we'll, we'll worry about that later. Uh, we'll get the badge first. Um, what else do you got? Should we do a selfie and say goodbye? Flippity flip. Let's see. Wow, it is dark in here. <laughs> I feel like it's only nighttime, but we are deep in the bowels of the Mandalay Bay parking lot. Yeah, it was a bit hard. I got the lights turned on to help yeah. out. But yeah. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us for this video. If you are just here for the road trip, then thank you. You are done now. You can go uh, be about your day, have fun, do whatever, dance with a penguin. Uh, if you would like to see CES, or whatever we're going to find at Mandalay Bay, we will try put a little bit of that up to this. Something. We don't know what's going to happen. So quickly, thank you to our Patreon members. Um, you guys are great. They uh, whisper, engage, and... Unbridle. No, un un Unbridle. Oh, okay, I was wondering what that was. <laughs> so <laughs> now you say whisper quietly. Whisper. Engaged. Unbridled. Yay! Oh, that's cool. We should do that all the okay, time. Okay, cool. It's nerdy. Yeah, we're not um, going to go up that well. Easy, easy drive. Yeah, really pleasant. Um, windy. Yeah. We're going to leave. Thank you so much for joining us for this video. And just remember that whatever you drive, whether I have nothing to say. What am I saying? Whether I don't know. it's windy or not. I whether, don't know. Yeah. Whether it was at CES or not. Whether it's on a road trip weather, weather. or just about town. Enjoy the ride. Stay tuned for some CES, maybe. Probably. If not, bye. Mm -hmm. So much walking already. Bad trigger, yes. That was pretty easy. Trigger, look at stuff? Yeah. Okay. It's electric. There are a lot of people here. You want to get the line? Or yeah, let's get in line. The line is all the way down here. Oh my, look. <laughs> we could just go sit down and wait for a while. I'm good just lying on the floor for a couple hours. I'm so glad I'm not in a wheelchair this year. <laughs> I like the enthusiasm. Okay, we're at the end. Woohoo! And now we just go for a slow stroll in the other direction. So apparently this is a bigger deal than we were prepared for. <laughs> oh, I guess, Geniverse. huh? Geniverse. Oh my goodness. I guess we're getting mics out. This is epic. Oh my gosh. Nothing at CES is small. Okay. So Geniverse, we're talking with Buck. Um, they have some great new stuff. What is this that you're holding? Okay. Next up, we're here with EcoFlow and this is Team. He was just telling me about this battery system is very unique so far in the industry, right? Now we are here with Shannon at WaterCube. Shannon was telling us all about this fantastic system. What can you share with our viewers? Okay, we found another cool company. This is Sparkling. And what was your name again? I'm sorry. My name is Maya and I'm from France. 